más o menos llevamos aquí unos 25 a 30 años y de los restos de años tengo otra vivienda más allá, entonces ahí la ciudad más cercana está en medio, por ejemplo entre Saxilí y Pujilí estamos por medio y nosotros pertenecemos a la Tacunga, como está en la mitad, es ciudad, es capital de la provincia. Y vivimos la mayoría en agricultura, ¿no? Y quizás como vivimos aquí, usted verá, en esta temporada siempre estamos eh, dedicados en ag agricultura y ganadería, tanto animales menores y mayores, pues en eso nos vivimos aquí. Aquí nosotros, como en campo que estamos, no tenemos horas fijas. Quizás trabajamos más de 10, a veces trabajamos menos, pero nuestros horarios no limitan porque pasamos. No garantizas en agricultura, por el, por el Estado no, no tenemos la garantización. Por ejemplo, a veces cae en la granizada nos termina la, la siembra o viene la helada, termina entonces de las 6 hasta 7 de la noche, 8 de la noche, pero y usted verá en agricultura es muy diferente que en la ciudad, entonces nos trabajamos así. Aquí en este alrededor estamos habitando más o menos o pasa de 100 personas como jefe de familia. En esta, en esta temporada se han migrado muchos, se han migrado muchos. Quizá tal vez eh, en, en aquí en el campo, quizás no tienen sus recursos económicos suficientes, pues por eso nos han migrado. Además, en estos uh, últimos años se ha migrado a, a Estados Unidos, mucha gente. Hay pocos, no todos, hay pocos por falta de economía. Entonces no se ha ingresado a la universidad. Entonces, es muy caro. sí, muy caro. Entonces, por eso, incluso de mi hija mismo, no puedo hacer matricular en la universidad. Entonces, mi hija eh, quiere especializar, quiere, quiere especializar en, en medicina. Bueno, lo que aquí hay más es el, la enfermedad nos, nos ha atacado, es... Eh, por ejemplo, dolor de los huesos. Será por el frío, ¿no? Entonces, y el otro se ha atacado es el de asunto de, de nuestras dentaduras. O sea, por ejemplo, es la muela. Entonces, y además eh, en estos momentos se ha presentado, quizás con algunas personas se ha presentado cáncer, no sé de qué, pero se ha presentado. Well, I came here almost 20 years ago, and uh, I was just taken with the people, uh, the humility, the friendliness, the beautiful landscape, and I will say the crushing poverty. It was, uh, the poverty was really just, I just couldn't get it out of my head. So I wanted to come back and do clinics, and we've been doing those for almost 20 years. I was talking with the Timmy leadership and said, you know, Guangahe has a big need. Would you be interested in coming up? And they came up and looked around and, and started uh, inviting universities to come here. So then they invited ISU to come to Guangahe, and that's how I met Eric and the team from Indiana State University. They address some important needs. We can address acute illness, we can address some education around chronic disease. We work with the healthcare system as closely as we can. Um, so that we're trying to connect them back into the healthcare system. So I, I see it, even though it's a one week brigade, we do a lot of education through translators or 
um, uh, for those that speak Spanish, we truly, really, really, really try and increase their health literacy. So we hopefully have a longer impact. The other very important impact that we have is that we show love and care. And uh, I've had hundreds of people tell us how much it, it means to them that those of us from the United States take the time to come to their world and spend time with them. I think it has a bigger impact than just the one time visit. So the other side of it is the students. Um, I really do this because the impact on the community is important and good, but the impact on the students can be incredible. I've seen many students who are in medicine or want to go into medicine really have their eyes opened up to the, the needs of the world, the poverty, even though we have poverty in the United States, the poverty in ma many parts of the world is so much worse. And I think their heart is changed by seeing that and they, and they may help in a different way in the world because of their experience here. And I really, that's my goal. That's one of my main goals for these trips is to have people's hearts broken, really, by seeing what's going on here and want to be part of, of the healing process in the world. For the future of Guangaje or para el futuro de Guangaje, got started because we tried to help a couple kids who asked us for help directly for college. They've only had a high school since 2012, uh, which was shocking to me. And uh, so he said, I now have graduates from high school who have passed the college entrance exam, who are qualified to go to college, want to go to college, but don't have the resources. These are first generation students. So my wife and I started the foundation to support the students that want to go to college that are eligible or qualified to go to college. One of the most important things about the scholarship that we talk about with them and, and that they do during their college is give back to their community, uh, do education programs, service programs. Uh, and they're very motivated. Their desire to give back to their community was incredible. So we, we really feel fortunate to help the indigenous youth in Ecuador.